knowledge that the doctor is in. Are we so excited? First time in Telford with Monopoly events, and we have pulled out all the stops. I know this is going to be an amazing, memorable panel. If you're here for the first time, I'm going to ask a few questions in fangirl, if you don't mind. Then we're going to ask you to go to the standing microphone, and you guys, we're going to get very interactive with this Q&A. But Telford, for your Doctor Who panel, are you ready? so much. Well, I'm just going to get right to it because we were just talking with Alyssa Milano about strong females in, in film and TV and the 13th doctor, the first ever female doctor. Where are my ladies at? What an amazing, amazing, iconic move for Doctor Who. What was it like, Jodie, when you were cast? It was incredible because, it, you know, as a, as a kid from the 80s, and I didn't necessarily see my, my uh, career going in that direction. I was so blown away and excited by it but I think also <laughs> there's so much noise around it as well and so when we started filming I was, I was feeling when the first episode was about to come out I was feeling the pressure so I thought for every other a actor who's played the doctor they've represented themselves and it was an all individual chat about them but suddenly it was if if you didn't like my doctor that meant I look it was all women. I represented everyone suddenly, and I was like, oh my god, but you know, I'm still here. We're so glad that you are. An amazing portrayal. Now, Amanda, I know that you started in, you've done theater, you've done Hollyoaks as well, big fan, but you made your West End debut in 2022. Do you, yes, these sisters are doing it for themselves, that's for sure. What do you love about the theater as opposed to working in TV and film? Um, I love that when you go on, you're acting the whole time. With TV, you could start and a minute later we stop for the scene stop, there's a technical error. But with theater, once you go on, like you're acting the whole time. I mean, you obviously come off and stuff. And when I go to theater, I always look at like other actors that are not talking. I'm like, what are they doing in the back? And so for me, I was always very conscious that I was like, someone might still be watching and you you know, you still you still part of the scene whether you're speaking or not. And I think I really enjoy just doing that for two hours every night. And also getting instant, like an instant reaction, because it was um I won't give it away, but it was a show that had lots was scary. It was not just my face. <laughs> um, so you got an instant reaction and I, I think I really, really liked that. We have to ask you what you're watching right now because you can see we have so many different genres like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Stranger Things, uh, current shows as well. What are you ladies enjoying right now in terms of film and television? I'm so behind, but I watched something and decided to tell everyone and they were like, nah, I think you're about, you're very late. I was like, guys, if you haven't seen Slow Horses, I really think you should get with the program. And I just came to the first season of that and thought it was amazing. And I'm also watching Poker Face. I love it. I know I'm a bit behind with that as well, but oh my gosh, she is phenomenal and I love that show. Yeah, yes. What are you watching? Well, I've got a, a very eclectic taste, so <laughs> we're going for documentaries about murderers and, and then Eric, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch, yes. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. I think the monster is fantastic. It's like a real person. But then we're going to go back to like reality TV 
on some of the like Channel 4, BBC. Yeah. Um, so she, she loves her 24 hours in. Lee's custody, there was a new one out and I've already seen it. So nice yeah. to chat to me about it and no, then her thing. Lost her audience there. But. I like to like really mix it up because with a documentary you can't have an opinion on how someone was murdered. But with a TV show I can be like, didn't like that ending, didn't like that. That is an eclectic taste. I like that. You're all over, I love that. So obviously we're all fans of something. That's what we say here at Monopoly. We're all for the fans, by the fans. What are you gals fans of? Whether it be a certain genre, we've got Marvel, DC, obviously Doctor Who is more sci-fi. What were you fans of growing up? Oh, I can, you can know. Um, so because the influences for me as a kid that made me want to be an actor, I've said it a million times, but Goonies was massive and it has stood the test of time. Has, like when you, and also, I don't know, there's all those big, there was so many films I felt as a kid that had these beautiful narratives about friendship and escapism. And, you know, whether they were, you know, kind of in a naturalistic setting or if it was heightened, whether it be like Labyrinth, something like that. There, there was just always that sense of, Someone who probably had a deep sense of loneliness, but finding themselves within a group that they could connect to, and I absolutely adore that. And that has then been my kind of like narrative throughout life to just be make sure I collect people that I absolutely love and want to be around all the time. Mandy, yes. you just got to channel your inner Goonie. When yeah, you I know you right? Goonie. <laughs> she won't have even seen it. I have seen it. Uh, but my experience was very different. So we we grew up watching lots of like British television, like the soaps and all that kind of stuff. We had a video shot, but it was lots of dramas. And I was also watching a lot of things that I shouldn't have done, having older siblings, quite young. And now I'm like, I remember the case, the video case, but I can't actually remember what the film's about. But I should really like watch them as an adult. But I'm like, oh, I've seen that when I was five. <laughs> like, I don't think you did. I was like, I did because my sister's really big and I watched all those scary things. But as I've entered the world of sci-fi, I've become more open to watching sci-fi and Marvel DC, which are not things, weren't genres that I actually really watched. Like, you know, a lot. I don't like really loud noises, which don't help in a lot of Marvel and DC <laughs> films. I'm like, a bit loud. <laughs> We're talking to two very strong females on screen, but I have to ask you ladies, what females uh, inspire you, whether it's in your real life or it's no, on screen? Oh, you know, that's really easy, and I'm gonna absolutely mortify her. My mom's oh. over there. Oh, yay, hi, mom. <laughs> Round of applause for mom. <laughs> she will kill me. That's me not getting a birthday message on Monday. So that's the easiest one in the world. Absolute hero. Love that. Heroine. At least you were listening. <laughs> um, I'm, this isn't copying her, but I've got five sisters and, a, a, like, and my mum. So I was brought up with very, very strong females. <laughs> um, so it has to be them. Like, they're the first people, are, you know, they're my first experience of women and ha how we basically just rule the roost. <laughs> that's just a given. Who run the world? Girls. Thank you. Uh, last question for me, then we're going to go to the fans. If you guys want to line up at that microphone, I know there's so many of you that have had great questions all day long. Let's all be polite. There we go. <laughs> Before we get to the fan questions, we've been talking all day about being starstruck and being at Comic Con and meeting our, you know, our idols. Who have you ever been starstruck for? Whether it's on a set or perhaps at a Comic Con, have you met someone? Or would you like to meet someone? I've embarrassed would... myself loads of times. Yeah, oh, I love it. it. I've done it, and he's been on telly. When um, <laughs> Will Champion, Johnny Buckley from Goldplay walked into my rehearsal, I saw and I didn't, this. I didn't know they were going to be there. That was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Huge Coldplay <laughs> fan. Yeah, I saw that. And then I met Sean Astin at uh, 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 Comic Con. Very, I played it even cooler then. Um, so yes, yeah, so I can. I think I spent my entire day fangirling over something or someone. We love to hear that as fans <laughs> ourselves. Mandy, who struck your fancy? No one. No joking. I've met really. Brad. <laughs> no, I've met really, really cool people. But for some reason, I don't go. Oh my God, it's that person. Which then makes me look like I don't know who they are or don't care. I absolutely care, it's just that reaction don't come out. I think I want them. Oh, we met David Tennant the other day. And I think he's... Oh, no, never 
met him, but you wouldn't know why I was excited. Because I was so cool about it. <laughs> and he, right? wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't know I gave him it either. <laughs> Maybe I need to work on that reaction. <laughs> it's an acting challenge for you to be like, cool. We could go there. We've got a lovely lady here with a question on the right. Hi. Um, first, I just want to say, Jodie, you stole my dream of being the first female doctor, <laughs> I will say. <laughs> I was raised with Doctor Who and always wanted to be in that TARDIS. Um, but for both of you, if you could go back into the TARDIS with any of the TARDIS teams, who do you think you would pick? Ooh. Ooh. I'd go. I'd say Rose. I would, I would have loved to, you know, like, because obviously for us, we've had, we've had experiences of now meeting people and being a part of the extended Doctor Who family, because when you're in it, you only know the people you're in it with, mm -hmm. and, but because this is such a lovely family to be a part of, and keep, there's like a couple of people you then bump into, and I thought, oh, I'd love to have filmed with Billy. Yeah. Well, I met Alex the other day, I know he's not companion or like that, but we had such a laugh. Oh, she was she hilarious. Was so, and we just had, had such a laugh. It's like long days, but she, I'm sure she'd be a hoot. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Well, I love you as well, but my favourite is, unfortunately, David Tennant, but... <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Who? Oh, sorry, David. Um, so, I feel a bit cheated we didn't get to see David in your outfit. Do you know why he didn't regenerate in your outfit? Because it could have been that... Oh, no, I don't know. And I've been asked before and I don't know. And could maybe have been that it's something just, I should. Uh, yeah, we see him in your outfit. And then, of course, we start the new Christmas specials. And, of course, he's changed think maybe, because there's been time. I didn't know if it was... Maybe, maybe no one could wear it as well. I was just going to say, maybe it didn't fit him. Sounds <laughs> about right. <laughs> It's like the new dog never fits your clothes. Uh -huh. I don't know, maybe it was still too close to COVID for... It was too spacey, I think, for it. <laughs> falling down. <laughs> They've got suspenders on. Yeah, top perfection is what they're trying to say. Yeah, we did, I don't know. And like, this is interesting, because I think sometimes with the right, we sometimes get asked questions about it, and we're like, oh, we did, we did my game. <laughs> but, so I don't know, and I didn't ask at the time. But if I ever get told, I'll say it publicly so everyone knows. Yeah, my heart's David next time I'm tracking Yeah, you ask him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you. <laughs> you got this, girl. Hi, um, I'm Amy. Um, so last week, you two were both at Fan Expo Dallas, and um, <laughs> you had a panel with the wonderful Alex Kingston, and I was wondering if you could tell us what Alex Kingston whispered in your ear. <laughs> Shaniqua. She didn't whisper that in my ear. I'm not telling you. <laughs> but it was an incredible moment. And I have to say, it was such a brilliant panel because, I mean, I didn't know I was going to walk away with key pieces of information. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> no spoilers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hello. Um, so, eight, seven, eight years ago when you were both cast, if it had been the other way round, Man, what kind of doctor would you have liked to play? Oh my god. And what Joni, the... what kind of companion would you like my to play? My doctor would sit down a lot. <laughs> they would just be chill, like the other companions would do all the stuff for her. And she'd be like, yeah, I'll come along. <laughs> That's what, yeah, just chilled. You just send, send us yeah, on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think there's something buzzing over there we might get to visit her. <laughs> I would have been someone who'd have really struggled with taking direction. <laughs> I've got control issues. I, d I think I'd have been kicked out the TARDIS straight away. I definitely. Oh, I'd have been. I'd have been a, a, an awful companion. <laughs> I feel like you would have touched loads of stuff. I'd have definitely yeah, like, much. especially if it says like, don't, don't touch it. Yeah, but <laughs> I have to now. I want to know everything. Like, right? yeah. I'd be like, oh, I think it's buzzing. We might go there. I'd be like, why, why, why? <laughs> Jobs were. That's what worked out. Yeah. worked out. Better. Perfect casting. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Great question. Thank you. Hi there. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay to record this. That's okay. 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 I know during COVID, like, I didn't watch Doctor Who until the last minute because I don't know. Even I wasn't just stuff with all the hate comments that people were saying at the time. I didn't know if I. It, I did, I'm sorry, I'm speechless about this. 
It's just... When I saw you were going to Doctor Who, I was upset of all the hate comments that you, you guys were getting. <laughs> It was all me. <laughs> it wasn't you. It was. It was all the fan, most of the fans at first. Most fans were horrible. No, no, do you know what? It's a noisy few. That's what you'll find in life. It's always a noisy few. You seem to be loud and love the sound of their own voice. But you're a beautiful fandom. And we, since leaving the show, have had these wonderful experiences of coming out and meeting you all. And you know what? Can I, I think there's more love than hate. Can I tell you? I say your show was the best you had. Do, sorry, when you had your run of the show, I'm guessing you made it the best you can have it. Loved it. We had the best time, didn't we, both? It was fantastic. <laughs> um, shame Dan can't be here, all the others, but at least we got two. We got the Doctor and Yaz. Yeah, the best team. Yes. The, Thank the, you so the much. The best duo. Thank you. Since Clara. Thank you. Well, Clara, Bill, everyone else. Everyone's the same. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. I will agree that Doctor Who fans are some of the most loyal in the entire world. You guys are amazing. We see all the cosplay every single Comic Con. It's just an amazing universe. So you guys should give yourselves a round of applause for the passion that you have for Doctor Who. It's amazing. Hi there. Hi. I'm Liberty. Um, in Eve of the Daleks, we found out that Yaz had feelings for the Doctor. And it was such a big moment. I should be remembered for the queer community and I wanted to know what it was like when you first knew that was going to happen. Aww. Mm. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm going to speak first because yeah. you look like negative Nelly down there. No. And we were delighted because actually it was, it, for, for us two, it was just, we just kind of clicked and loved each other straight away and there was, there's never been the acting of chemistry, there's never been like kind of that forced friendship or anything like that. So the progression of that storyline was so beautiful and particularly because we started it side by side and we ended it side by side and that's what I think was so amazing. It was it's heartbreaking to leave anything but knowing our like you know obviously story wise there's a beat but for us those last scenes on top of the TARDIS were you know, moments before we shot that very last thing, all in a room together. And it was just really beautiful. And I think it sums up, it was like a slightly method version of the fact that we were heartbroken to be separated as well, as well as those two characters. And also, I think as well, a lot of it, I, I didn't realize till I watched it back that there were like, those feelings were sort of seed planted throughout the years. I, I feel like it might have come on quite quickly, but actually if you go back and look at it, it's sort of there through the journey. So it's nicer to watch than it being a big revelation on there it was happening at the time. Yeah. Hello. Hi, I'm Shani. Um, Hi. Out of all the Doctor Who villains, which one are you most scared of and why? For both of you. I'm the same. <laughs> I'm going to say the master. Oh no. Oh no, I've changed my answer if you've ever heard another one. I'm not scared of any of those. Um, I would say the master because actually, Sasha, the master, like really keeps you on your toes. Especially when he changed from like, oh, to the master. Actually, and you know, he's there when you're acting, so you never know what he's going to do. And Sasha, as an actor, he always gives you different versions. So it can be quite scary. Like, he could be smiling when he's not supposed to. It's quite sinister and. Oh, interesting. I was scared of the kid with the, the gas mask. It scared me so much as a kid. <laughs> Do you know my sweeping angel? I just... Oh, no. Don't blink. Oh, no. It's just, it's just the idea. And also, when we filmed with them, there's lots of, like, actors in them. But then there's also, you know, a room full of models that the art department have made and I mean the difference between them is minimal so you would suddenly forget and just be chatting away thinking you're next to a statue and then they'd scratch your face you're like oh my god <laughs> and like what, do you remember one of the art department didn't realise it kind of slightly leaned and she was like are you alright oh my god I'm sorry. <laughs> but, it's, but it was the it's the detail in the makeup that's the thing. A lot of the time, we're not that scared because we're trying to be scared of a tennis ball. <laughs> so when they're actually there, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, nice Jim. Great cosplay as well. Hey, Hi. Come on up. Hello, Jodie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. 
and I'm your favourite doctor. <laughs> What's your favourite doctor, Judy? Who's my favourite doctor? Joe Martin. <laughs> he was a fugitive. I love a fugitive. And I... she, was a she was a fugitive doctor, wasn't she? And I loved, loved a costume. And when I, you know, that reveal and everything, I thought the fact that none of you knew about it. There was no spoilers there, that was amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Great question, of course. Come on up. You can move the microphone down if it's easier for you, darling. Uh, there we go. What's your favorite episode? To have filmed, to like to be in. Yeah, go on. Um, mine is Demons of the Punjab because um, it was really nice to film something that related to my background, my personal background. I thought it was shot beautifully, the story was brilliant. So I just have like a personal connection with that episode. I loved my very first one because it meant I met you guys. And I loved the transition through, you know, being, like we were chatting earlier, I was in Peter's costume, and there was a, just the whole episode building towards finding yourself, and as an opening, as an actor, into a character, that was just so amazing for me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Great questions, Thanks, guys. Well, you might recognize this gentleman. <laughs> There we go. Um, my name's Artemis. Um, Great name. <laughs> thank you, I chose it myself. Right. Um, I have loved you since St. Trinian, so I'm probably showing my age. Like, yeah. Beverly. Yeah, Beverly, we love Beverly. And man, I was introduced to you in Doctor Who, so I'm looking forward to any of your future stuff. Um, I was wondering if in the future you're called back to play your characters again, and um, it's a crossover with all the Doctors, which couple of doctors would you choose and um, which kind of kind of companions would you choose for that episode? Ooh, I because I was really lucky, obviously I've had a moment where there were quite a few popped up for me. But out of the I would love, because I've worked with him before and I absolutely adore him, I would love to work with Chris Eccleston again. I adore him. And Antigone was such a special time and you know, little did I know. I was just gonna copy him. <laughs> um, I would love to work with Karen Gillans and Millie's. Yeah. I think that would be really exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen bits and pieces of Millie's work so far, and I, I always thought she was a brilliant actress. I've seen her in um, Coronation Street and thought she was absolutely fantastic. So I think that mix would be nice. I haven't seen the latest episode yet, so That's I'm looking forward to seeing who she is. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. No worries. Hello, UK. Hey. Um, I have two questions to ask, okay? Um, what's your favourite episode to watch? And if you could go back and redo someone else's stories, which one would you choose? I, I don't know the... I'm terrible with titles, so I'm really sorry if I've got... I won't know the name of the episode. But I was very jealous. I think this answers the same question. I cannot believe I wasn't in an episode with a Spice Girls song. <laughs> I can't believe I, well, I mean, you know, obviously it wasn't the doctor doing it, but just the whole choreography of that scene, I am just infinitely jealous of. I will be jealous forever. I want to I wanna do a little dance medley to spice up your life. She could do it now. I could do it now. We could sing. We could put you to work right now. I mean, just between us. I'll do it now. You sing it. <laughs> I think when I watch it back, this is from our series, so um, I love watching Rosa Parks back. Same here, I like Yeah, I don't know, I just love, I, I think it's just a brilliant episode. I think Vanette was phenomenal. And it just looks great. Yeah, full stop. <laughs> Which episode would you, um, if you could go back and change, obviously, your doctor into a, another doctor's story, which one would you choose? Oh, I know that. I mean, she, I mean, oh, that is too much pressure. Would you? I think I'd ruin all of them. I was where I was supposed to be. Would you do any of the shooties? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I I met him in January in Leicester while they were filming as well. I did. Oh, wait, yeah. yet to yeah. meet him? No. Yeah, he is a very lovely bloke. He is. 
Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Have a good day, you too. You too. Thank you. Wonderful question so far, guys. Hello, good sir. So, so Jody, in your last episode, all the doctors came back. What was your favourite doctor to work with? Ah, you can't ask me that. I was looking him in the eye. just something so magical and nostalgic about Sylvester and I'd already met him and he was so lovely but it was just yeah I think that was it but I can't say there's a favourite but I did think that that was just I mean there's just from his costume his performance and the fact that when you meet him you just feel as if you're in the presence of the doctor continually I think that was really special Jodie, if you were to play a role in Doctor Who other than the Doctor, what would it be? Ooh. Do you know what I'd love to be? Never said this. I'd love to be a little pating, just causing havoc. Oh. Rabbling around, chewing on stuff. I would yeah. love her to be pating, then I could give her a good kick when she's being on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Oh, oh. oh that's control. what the patina do, break it straight away. <laughs> there you go. You might need to bend down. <laughs> Madonna makes it look, look so easy, right, with these microphones. How do I put it off? Um, just bob down. Bob down. Bob yeah. down. There you go. Um. <laughs> we can hear you. The giggles. Is it on? The phenomenal one's going to help you. There we go. Um, I I have two questions. Is that all right? Um, I have one. Out of all your time filming Doc, your run of Doctor Who, what would be your favourite? What was your most favourite part about film, filming? Right. When you're on set, you film it for a really long time. So. A lot of jobs, you know, a long job is usually about five months. This is nine, ten months filming, and in COVID it was a year we filmed for. Now that is a lot of time for a lot of pranks <laughs> and a lot of banter. And I think what is an absolute joy is that the family isn't just us guys as the farm. The farm extends to the crew, to the guest artists that are coming in and and it is just a joy every day to sit on set and play a prank on someone <laughs> but it's just really wonderful there's so much love isn't there and there's so much laughter that you can find in between like it's like Mandy was saying you know if you're on a, in a play you go on stage and then you're in it in the moment the whole way through but with filming there's so many breaks you've got to fill those breaks with laughter and we were very good at that yeah, thanks to Brad. He kept us entertained, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like having a, like a front row ticket um, to a comedy show every day. and loved it. Yeah, and if you were to have any, anything from, the, from Doctor Who and have it work as, it, as intended in the show, what, what would it be? Oh, psychic paper. I